Yo, thank you guys for the support on the last Dead Rising video. Honestly, when I uploaded that, I just wanted to rant about a funny fucking chef, and it seems you all enjoyed it. So I thought I'd come back and rant about another boss that I really enjoy. This video is dedicated to Kent, the rival photographer in Dead Rising 1. For anyone who might not have played Dead Rising, allow me to explain who Kent is. He's another photographer like you, stuck in the zombie apocalypse. However, unlike you, he's an egotistical weirdo who is going around enjoying taking pictures of all this shit that's happening in the zombie apocalypse. The reason I like Kent so much is that he basically snaps because of his interactions with Frank. Because the thing is, he's not a bad guy. Yeah, I said he's a little weird and a little egotistical, but... At the end of the day, Kent didn't seem like he was going to go out of his way to hurt anybody. But it's through his interactions with you, he finds a rival. Like I said, Kent is very egotistical, and once he notices that you're a photographer, he wants to beat you. He wants to prove that he's better than you. But as you continue to interact with the guy, he realizes that you are indeed better than him, which drives him insane, to the point that he snaps and starts to threaten your life or someone else's life. And I think that's just so fucking cool. You create a psychopath. Frank makes somebody fucking go batshit insane just by being better than them. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself. There are many interactions with Kent, and here I am just summarizing the entire thing. So why don't we start with the first meeting with him? So when you first meet Kent in Paradise Plaza, he immediately cusses you out for blocking his shot. But you see, here's the thing. The environment around him looks boring as shit, so I think he's just trying to talk shit to you. For some odd reason, Frank decides to conversate with the guy, which ends up being his downfall. You see, Frank makes the biggest sin of all, and calls himself a professional in front of Kent. Kent is immediately triggered and decides to lecture you on why your skills are garbage while his gun does whatever the hell it wants. Once Kent cools down, he comes up with a bright idea. He's going to give you tips on photography while modeling for every single photo. Which means now it's picture time! We gotta follow the bastard around and take his picture three separate times. However, here's the thing. When the mission began, I realized I was out of camera battery and I thought I was softlocked. So I got a little angry, got a little mad, and I threw my sledgehammer right at his face. Kent reasonably responds by telling me, hey man, cut that out. I'm a pacifist, and you know what, Kent? That's my bad. I'm sorry for hitting you. Kent, you said you were a pacifist. Why the fuck did you shoot me in the face? Anyways, I found some batteries in a nearby camera store, and I took his picture. Fantastic! After that, he'll look over the photos you've taken and say that you've done a pretty good job. But then, he's going to show off his photos. And here's where I'm actually going to side with the guy. He shows off this picture of him blowing off a zombie's head, and I gotta admit, it looks fucking cool. But Frank winces and pushes the camera aside, which pisses off Kent. Then he challenges us to take a better photo than the ones he's just shown us. However, we find out that we're not going to be taking pictures of zombies or gore, instead we're going to take the most erotic photo possible. Like, you fucking pervert! Why the hell do you need me to go take pictures like that? This is a huge-ass mall, surely there's gotta be a magazine or something, you don't need me to go get you your material. However, I think Kent would rather have sex with his camera than an actual woman, so I think he's just trying to make the challenge as hard as he can. However, we have something he doesn't know about. Jesse. You can't just take a picture of her tits and call it a day, because Kent will laugh at your face and leave the game. The thing is, Kent needs a picture with 500 erotic points. Jesse's booba only gives you 300. However, you can take a picture of Jesse that will give you the points required, but you need to wait a little bit. You have to wait until Carlito's second fight and kick his fucking ass. After that, Brad's gonna get shot and you get sent to the security room. After that, Jesse's going to ask you to go get medicine for Brad, but fuck that shit is photo time! Head to the doorway, turn around and take a picture of Jesse and you'll get the perfect photo for Kent. All that's left to do is to wait for the second meeting. Once the time came, I went over there, heard a little laugh, and there was my boy Kent. And then I made a discovery. Kent is programmed to follow you around until he gets his photos. So you could just lead the horny bastard throughout all of Paradise Plaza until he catches up and gets his photos. So I walked around a little bit, watching him menacingly follow me from behind until I went and hid in the bathrooms. Sure enough, he broke in and I gotta admit, watching him slowly creep towards me demanding photos is not the most comforting sight, so I thought about shooting the guy. However, he noticed and didn't take too kindly to that. So I had no choice but to hand over the photos. So he studies the photo for an uncomfortable amount of time and then realizes that you are better than him. Angered by this, he challenges you to meet him one more time the following day and that you guys would settle this. And wait you will. Wait the entire 24 fucking hours just to meet him again. Kent, I want to do other things. Why are you making me wait to record this? But this is where things get interesting, so strap the fuck in, people. Kent is about to fucking snap. This is the third and final time we get to meet Kent, and he's going to put someone else's life at risk. Whether it be your life or this sorry bastard named Tad. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. Kent has two different boss fights, which is just absolutely fucking sick. And in fact, one of his fights is my favorite in the entire game. However, his other one is a bit weaker, but still pretty good. And that's going to be the one we talk about first. To activate this version of the fight, all you have to do is meet him on time. Just head to Paradise Plaza or be waiting there by 12 and you'll get the cutscene. Now this is the point where I would summarize the cutscene, but I like what they do here. Both of the cutscenes where you see Kent snap are beautifully well done 
and I'd like to show them off. Ah, Frankie, good timing. I was uh, just about to shoot my Mwah! piece de resistance. <laughs> I'm gonna capture on film the exact moment that a human being crosses into zombiehood. So guys, stop me if you've heard this one before, but Kent is fucking pissed. Here's the thing that truly sets us apart from Kent. Despite everything Frank goes through, he still remains relatively sane. And he's still a good guy. But as you can see, Kent, he just couldn't take it anymore. His rivalry with you has pushed him over the edge. And I don't blame the guy. In his head, he was about to take a photo that was going to be infinitely better than any you've ever taken. And you ruined it. You ruined his perfect shot. Of course he's not going to fucking forgive you. He's going to fucking kill you. So we got to fight him, and thus the first fight with him begins. Overall, this fight is pretty simplistic and not that difficult, and I think the best place to start is Kent's moveset. Prior to this, you've already seen Kent's moveset. Throughout your many interactions with him, you might have actually seen him defend himself. Kent could shoot, punch, kick, or throw a flying kick, and he doesn't just use those moves on the zombies, he's now going to use them on you. Except he saved one special little move just for you. And that move is to stunlock the shit out of you until you die. Well, that's actually being a little too dramatic, but the thing is, Kent can stunlock you. Every now and then, he might just string his attacks along and just keep beating the shit out of you. Now you can dodge out of it, but if you don't, you're just gonna lose a fuck ton of health, and hell, maybe you'll even die. So, I've gotta say, his moveset's pretty simplistic. I was able to dodge all his piss-poor attacks and just kick the living shit out of him. You see, I think the game designers intentionally made Kent pathetic, thus his moveset reflects that. It's pretty simplistic and easy to dodge. However, there's one thing about his programming that just makes this fight so much better. Unlike other psychopaths, Kent is going to follow you to the ends of the earth until you leave Paradise Plaza. He will not give up the chase, and he's actually programmed well enough to follow you almost anywhere. There's only a few spots in Paradise Plaza that you can get to that will get you out of his reach. And I mean, why would you do that when you could literally explore Paradise Plaza with your new best friend Kent? That's right, as long as you stay in Paradise Plaza, he's going to follow you around. Since he's such a pathetic pushover, you can beat his ass with virtually anything in Paradise Plaza. You want to go fight him in a CD store? Fight him in a CD store. You want to fight him in a restaurant? Fight him in the restaurant. Hell, you could even fight him in a fucking toy store. The whole world is your oyster. Go kick his ass in any of these stores and have a ball. And it's that reason alone that makes this fight so good for me. In fact, it might be my second favorite fight in the game. However, there's one fight above this, and that is his second fight. You see, Kent wanted you to meet him at noon, so naturally, to get the second fight, you have to show up late. And from my research, you can show up as little as five minutes late and you'll activate the fight. Which is actually pretty absurd because, Kent, I feel like it would take time to infect Tad with that little maggot of yours, so how the fuck did you do that in five minutes? But before I reveal too much, how about I just show you the cutscene? Listen, Mr. West, I, I owe you an apology. It looks like you're a pro after all. You know, if I would have known that, I'd have taken pictures like this from the start. Ha! How'd you like them apples, huh? You see, I think outside the box. And the best part is, I'm just getting started. <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna tie you up nice and tight. Get the zombies all riled. <laughs> Boys, he's lost it. Boys, he's goddamn lost it. Get somebody help. Send help now. If it wasn't obvious by the chain on my fucking throat, this fight is going to be ten times more complex and difficult than the first. You see, in the first fight, your movement wasn't restricted, Kent was easy to kick the shit out of, and more importantly, you had your inventory. However, in this fight, your movement is restricted, you don't have your inventory, and there's zombies now. And all of this together makes for a very difficult boss fight, because, like I said, you don't have your inventory, so the only way you can defend yourself is with the environment around you. I mean, technically, you could punch Kent, but it's better to use a bench, potted plant, or those trash cans, because if you crack them open, you can get tons of goodies. You could get a knife, baseball bat, gun, or hell, some chips. 
The ultimate weapon against Kent. Take that, bitch! Speaking of Kent, it's high time we talk about the little bastard. For the most part, he's gonna be at his most annoying here, and his moveset is similar to the first fight, so he can still punch ya, kick ya, shoot ya, and combo you half to death. However, the developers knew that this was gonna be quite difficult, so they gave you an opening. He will now occasionally use his camera, which gives you an opening to beat the shit out of him. So it just becomes this dance of avoiding the zombies, avoiding Kent, grabbing weapons, and trying to beat the shit out of him, while equally praying for Kent to not just combo you to oblivion. And that pretty much summarizes all of the encounters with Kent and his two boss fights. And overall, this motherfucker has managed to be my favorite psychopath across all of the Dead Rising games. And with that, I think it's high time to move on to the boss fight. Now originally I was going to use his boss theme for it, but I figured I could find a much more fitting theme for the fight, and so I did. I think outside the box. And the best part is I'm just getting started. <laughs> Smile! Keep it up, old timer. Try a little harder, old timer. Over here, old man! You old sack of crap! Nice, I'm a pro! You're nothing! Nothing! Do it, Frank. Take my picture. It'll look great on your mantle. <laughs> 